Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Dale of Merchants Collection. Uh, although if you are interested in any of the Dale of Merchants games, they, they work off the same playset. There are just different sets of animals in there that do change the game quite a lot, but the core gameplay is the same. So it should give you some idea about those as well. So just before we start, I thought that since this is kind of a, it's it's a load of new animals for Dale of Merchants itself and a kind of big box to store everything, I thought I'd just quickly show off you know, the stuff that is in this uh, this big box. So there are eight new animal types. And since this is a big storage solution, there are also new cards that describe the animal types and have these lovely metrics for complexity, interactivity, nastiness, and randomness. So the good thing about uh, Dale Merchants, if, if you're just into all of those types of things, you can just be shuffling these up and play how you like. But if, like us, you hate nastiness in games, then unfortunately you're going to miss out on some stuff. But you, know, you don't have to be uh, surprised by it. So the, the Tomb Bat, and the the pangolins that are that are that are full on everything. They are random, very nasty, very interactive, and uh, fairly complex. And use uh, a couple of new dice. Uh, it's a shame to miss out on some of those things, but hey, it's the way that we are. So we have the, those pangolins that uh, they're basically just uh, wreak destruction. Uh, they are absent-minded, and uh, even the players that take their cards might uh, find that they backfire. There are the vigorous emperor penguins that give you powerful effects in tough situations. There are the wealthy tutaras that use gold that their ancestors got that are a little bit complex. Not nasty at all, though. There are the enthusiastic wood turtles that like, um, like finishing later. They, they like to introduce new techniques, but uh, have uh, trouble finishing them. And if you're not careful, you might find that uh, you come to a standstill. The swindling black-headed gulls, who are quite simple to get their hang of. They, they gift junk, basically. They, they give uh, junk cards to other players that uh, will get in the way, but can slow the game down a little bit. The mischievous Tasmanian devils aren't necessarily about stealing, but they can enhance those that uh, do like to steal, but they are there to mess with the other players. And then there are the stealthy long-winged tomb bats and the lively slender mongooses, and they both involve the day-night cycle with this groovy little cardboard clock that comes with the game. And the, the, the mongoose... The mongooses will work much better in the daytime and not so much in the night. And you, they, they will kind of benefit you and other people. So you want to make sure that they benefit you more than your opponents. And the tomb bats are fairly nice in the day, but turn into kind of steely destruction bots at night. So as well as all of these, and of course, you know, dividers for everything in this nice big box, you might notice the, the sheer number of these. That's because covering for, you know, the first two Dale of Merchants and the Eurasian Beavers mini expansion and Dale of Merchants 3 that will be coming at some point in the future, all of these dividers are included so that you've got this, this, this box will hold all of that. There are also character cards that you can play with after you are more used to the game that will give you in particular a particular set of abilities because in the in Dale of Merchants you will select some certain species of uh, creatures and mix them all together and they are the pool that you will deck build from but you can give yourself special abilities that range from easy, medium and difficult so you know the easiest ones are just your hand size is increased by one or after building a stack you can search your discard pile and uh, put something back in into your hand, simple things like that, all the way up to these great big things where choose an opponent to be your master and uh, add tokens onto your code of conduct. And it comes with all of these extra cards that uh, relate to certain characters, various schemes and game bending tricks. And there's also, of course, a beautiful box to store all of this stuff in. So what shall we play with? I think we want to show off day and night. We want to show off some gold. And do we go for wood turtles or penguins? I'm, I'm sorry, wood turtles. It's got to be penguins. They are in a two player game. It's, it's the number of players plus one is the number of creatures that you take. So I will grab these and set up the actual playthrough. And here we go. So remember, cling on subtitles for the mistakes. Turn those on. You'll be corrected, hopefully. And there is handheld and static cameras that you can switch between. That is different now we're in the playthrough. So what's happened? I've taken the three animal decks. You take 
a number one from each animal type for each player. And the rest are taken out of the game, the rest of the number ones. All the other animal cards are shuffled up and put into the market here. And then we add junk cards to our deck, which basically do nothing other than give us one value for, for buying things. Uh, and until so we've got 10 cards. And so we've each got 10 card decks, shuffled them up, drawn five, and we're ready to start the game. Almost ready. Just realized Marty is off screen there. There he is. He's playing. So I am starting the game. And then on your turn, you perform one action. They are techniques. You can, certain cards have got techniques on. You play them for their text, do what it says, and they will often be discarded. Passive, you don't have to play them for their effect. So I can, thanks to the Mongoose's dr dramatic romantic ability, I should show it to the static cameras as well, uh, you can advance the clock one space once in my turn which is important because if i've got a lot of mongoose cards i want it to be the day they're a lot more effective in the daytime than the nighttime uh, there you can take a market action which is buy a card from the market the cost of the card is the number on it plus the amount shown in the market as well to pay for them, you use the values on your cards. So unlike, say, Dominion, where you start off with all low-value cards and stuff, you I, I can buy pretty much you know, anything to value five. I can buy straight away, and then I can use that as buying power in the future. So the kind of the, the gold cards and the ability cards are combined in, uh, in this game. Uh, so I can do that. I can also take a stall action, which is building my market stall, which is what I want to do to win the game. I need my market stall to have eight things in it. As soon as somebody does that, they win the game. How do you get stuff in the stall? Has to be animal cards. Has to be from the same type of animal. And they have to equal the number that you need. So your first one, I could start my stall straight away if I wanted. I never get to use that card again. It's out of my deck. But I have started my stall. The next one would need to be a two. So if I had, say, the the bouquets in my hand. I could do another stall action on a future turn, and now I've done the number two of my uh, stall. Later on, if I needed a five, I could do the two and the three from the penguins because it's from the same animal type, but you need to go on and on, up to eight. As soon as someone has done their eight, they win the game. So let's have a look. I have, I can advance the clock if I want to. I, I don't really care about doing that yet though. Uh, I have four junk, which does nothing. Can't be played to my stall, usually. Uh, but uh, I can do a market action. So I have up to five buying power. So what can I afford? We have the bouquets, which let you draw cards from the market stack, two in the day and one at night. Put one into your hand and throw the rest away. So you're taking a gamble, could be something really valuable, could be something not so valuable, but you just get to put it in your hand. And that's just a technique action. Traveling equipment, uh, this would cost me three plus one, so four. Uh, spend one to draw two cards from your deck and uh, place them into your hand. Throw away a card from your hand and discard another. Throw away is remove from the game. Uh, we go to golden opportunity, that costs five. Throw away a card from your hand and take a gold token from the bank. And this can be spent as if it was money on the cards, but you get to save this, similarly to you know how the, the coin tokens work in uh, Dominion. Uh, then ice trade I could take, uh, spend X, one or more to draw one card from the market deck and place it into your hand. Uh, and then finally, uh, so that's it's a way of getting cards out as well. Uh, selecting contracts, take up to three cards in the day, one at night from the top of your discard pile, throw one away and put the rest back on the top of your deck in any order. I can't afford that though because that costs seven. I like the idea of getting random stuff out of the market deck. I'm going to pay two, just my two junk. Cards you buy in daily versions go into your hand rather than the discard pile like most deck builders. Uh, then you refill your hand back up to five. So I did my one action, I drew back up, and now it's Marty's turn. Well, the final action I didn't mention, by the way, is an inventory action, and that is discard as many cards as you would like from your hand. So if you are really stuck for something to do, or you just you know the card that you need for your final market stall is in there somewhere and you just want to get to it, you can just discard your hand and or however many you want and draw back up and but you skip your turn for doing that. Uh, so Marty has the dramatic romantic as well, but he also has the avid financier, which I've just drawn actually from the wealthy Tuataras. And it's a technique card. Uh, place two coins from the bank on this card, and at the start of your next two turns, take a coin from this card. So Marty could just take that as his turn if he wanted. 
and get some uh, money in the future. Oh, we need to actually move the market along and have a look. He's got traveling equipment from the penguins. We've seen what that does. I think, yeah, Marty might uh, try and play it slow and steady. He's going to play the Avid Financier. Now, if the clock is in play, which I think at the moment only the mongooses and the bats care about the clock, whenever you play a Technique card, it gets advanced one space. So Marty would take two of these and they'll come off one per turn. He draws back up. That's just another junk card. And we go back to me. So I actually, it's not the end of Marty's turn yet. The Avid Financier has the plus on it, which means extra action. So even though he's done uh, his action for the turn, he gets to do something else. He will go to the market then. And I think he likes the idea of thinning out his deck a little bit and getting more coins. So he's going to pay three junk and grab this golden opportunity. Just uh, sticking uh, with those two Ataras who have been good to him. He gets to draw two more. He's got the resourceful ally from the penguins there. Slide them along and see a new market card, and it's Display of Power. Spend two to increase your hand size by two for this turn. That's a bit frustrating for me, because <laughs> I, I could have drawn that with my bouquets. Uh, so it, we're still in the daytime, just about. So I'm going to spend my bouquets to draw two cards from the market deck, and I get to keep one. So the Ice Trade, we know, lets us spend cards from my hand to draw a card from the market deck and put it into my hand. So I don't know what I'm going to get, but it could be it's, it's free. Uh, or the stove, when you build a stack with this card, you may spend X, one or more, to change this card's value to X, so what you spent, divided by two, rounded up for this turn. So that gives me more flexibility later on in putting stuff into my stalls. For now, I think I like the idea of just getting more stuff out of the market stack. I'm going to go for that ice trade, and the stove is thrown away, which goes into the market discard pile, which is off the screen for you static cameras. There it is, though. Switch to the handheld camera if you don't believe me. So the bouquets do not have an extra action, so they go into my discard pile. My turn is over, and because a technique card was played, we advance into nighttime. I don't draw anything up. Marty. So he's got... So he takes a gold coin off his Avid Financier. His golden opportunity can go out, which is throw away a card from your hand. He'll throw away a junk. And he can take a coin from the bank. So he's got an extra two coins there. And that's another, that's an extra action card. It's a technique, so we need to advance this. So he's got resourceful ally. Search your discard pile for a card and put it on the bottom of your deck. He's not so bothered about doing that. It's, it's only junk in his discard pile right now. So actually, that could be good because his golden opportunity is now in his discard pile because it's been used. So he'll play his resourceful ally. The golden opportunity comes back in here because when it's fully resolved, it goes into your discard pile. So the resourceful ally is fully resolved, goes into his discard pile. So he's got two if he wants to buy something. So that's a bit of a downside of what he's just done because now he can't afford to buy anything. So he's just going to have to leave. Oh, actually, he's got two and the, the coins, hasn't he? So he can afford to buy stuff. He's going to go for... He's going to go for the... Traveling equipment, I think. Yeah, he's going to try and thin out his deck. So that's going to cost him one, two, three, and he'll hang on to that coin. So he gets that traveling equipment, and then he fills up his hand to five. So he needs to shuffle his discard pile. We fill the market deck back up, and it's going to be the Serenade, four cost Mongoose's card. Draw three in the day or one at night, cards from your deck, and place them into your hand. Then place Two in the day, one at night. Cards from your hand on the top of your deck. Okay, so I, I'm going to use my Avid Financier because it'll get me an extra action and get me some coins as well. I think then I'm going to go for my Ice Trade. I don't want these junk cards in my hand. So I'm going to spend two. It has to be just at least one. I'm going to spend two to draw a card from the market deck and put it into my hand. It's selecting contracts, so I can't do this straight away because I haven't got an extra action right now. But this is going to let me take up to three cards in the day or one at night from the top of my discard pile, throw away one, and place the rest on the top of my deck in any order. So they go into the discards now. I've had my turn. Three. So we played two technique cards, didn't we? So we are back in the day, which is good for the card that I've just gotten. And there's my resourceful ally. Marty gets the coin off his financier and it goes into the discard pile. Then he's got, he's going to do his golden opportunity, throw away a junk and get a coin from the bank. And he's got an extra action. 
He can still play his traveling equipment. Spend one to draw two cards from the deck and place them into your hand and then throw away a card from your hand and discard another. So he'll pay one junk to be able to do this. It draws two cards from his deck. So he's, uh, he's done a technique, hasn't he? And he's doing one now. So you do two from his deck, throw away a card from your hand. So he'll throw away this junk and then discard another. And then he's going to use his resourceful ally. So that puts it into Knight again, which is good for Marty because he hasn't got any Mongoose cards. I have. Search your discard pile for a card and put it on the bottom of your deck. He's going to do his uh, golden opportunity again and uh, try and really get, just get rid of all this junk. And so he hasn't got any cards to spend money with because this, this was all extra action cards. He's got three coins, though. He's going to go for... Yeah, he's going to have to go for the ice trade because these cost four and five because of the money on top of them. So he'll go for, he'll go for ice trade. Why not? Uh, so the market action was his last thing. That doesn't give him any extra action. So he draws back up. There we go. The golden opportunity right back in his hand. Then the market stacks move along and we have some more bouquets like I've got. They'll let you get some uh, things out of the market deck for free. So I get a coin off my financier. And then... I think I'm going to use my resourceful ally and I'm going to put my bouquets on the bottom of my deck so I definitely know I'm getting them next turn. My, uh, my deck's quite, uh, quite thinned out right now. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a technique played and it goes into my discard pile. Then I can do my selecting contracts, but it means I just get to draw this card and throw it away and I don't want to do that. So I'll probably save selecting contracts for a future turn. I can do my Dramatic Romantic and move us one step closer to the daytime. And then I could start working on the, the stall with the Dramatic Romantic. But I think let's buy something. We could go for another Selecting Contracts. It'll cost three. I do like the display of power, but it would cost seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. Increase your hand size by two, and it's a five card. That's, that's some good buying power. Yeah, it's some good buying power, and uh, good for the stalls later on. It's an extra action. It lets me have more cards in my hand. I think overall, that's a really good thing to have. So I draw back up to five, and I need to shuffle my deck. And actually, let's see what uh, new thing comes in here. It's another ice trade into the market. Unfortunately for me, it was just uh, some more junk. Uh, Marty... He's going to start off with his golden opportunity, get rid of another junk, and get a coin. Then what can he do? Uh, so that was a technique card. Go back into the day. And his ice trade, yeah, he will. He'll do his ice trade, so that advances the day a little bit more. He's going to use his dramatic romantic to advance it again, just uh, so I'm not playing multiple uh, mongoose cards, uh, because it'll be nighttime as soon as one more action is done. Uh, but he can spend one. He'll spend this to draw a card from the market deck and put it into his hand. He hasn't got any more actions left, but wow, that is a five-cost penguin card that cost him one. Uh, and it's each card valued at one that you use is valued five. Each two is four and vice versa for this turn. Wow, so it just reverses the values of all of your cards. So he needs to shuffle and draw it back up. I get the coin off the financier. And then what would I like to do? I think I, now I want to do my display of power, but if I do, that means I just get the top card of the market deck and I don't get a choice. I think that's worth doing though. I'm going to do display of power. So my hand size, if I spend two, I'll just spend junk. My hand size is increased by two. So I need to remember that. And then that had an extra action on it. I'm going to do bouquets. So I get this into my hand, serenade for next turn. And that's another technique played. And so I draw up to seven now. Three, four, five, six, seven. So hopefully, I've got a couple there that have got extra actions on them. Hopefully get some nice choices next turn. Marty is... He's got his practical values here, but I think he's going to hang on. What he's going to do is start his market stall off. He has uh, made the first step in his race. Unfortunately, he's losing his resourceful ally, but yeah, he's going for it. The whole thing is a race to eight stalls. Well, to fill your stall up to the eighth uh, degree, 
So it's back to me. I've got my resourceful ally. I'm going to put my bouquets back on the bottom of my deck. That's a technique played. Uh, so I have Serenade. So at night, this would let me draw a card from my hand and put it... Draw a card from my deck and put it into my hand, and then I have to put a card from my hand back on top of my deck. That wouldn't be too bad. Let's do that. So this goes into my hand, and then something goes on the top of my deck. Let's just put uh, Junk on the deck, because now I have Selecting Contracts, and it's Day. So let's play this. So take up two. So these should be in my discard pile now. I can take up to three cards from the top of my discard pile, but they're all good cards. I would throw away one and put the rest on the top of my deck. I don't want to do that. I'll hang on to that for now. So I could spend some money. I could, spe I, could, I could spend the two junk that I've got and just get rid of them. Unfortunately, this doesn't have an extra action on it. It's a technique, so we advance the clock. And I draw a card from the market deck and put it into my hand. It's greed. Uh, spend one to draw two cards from your deck and put them into your hand, and then discard a card from your hand. So, yeah. I feel like I've bought many cards. I've been <laughs> just uh, grabbing them for free, haven't I? Uh, so Marty, that's in his stall, isn't it? That's not just floating about. So he could reverse the values of all of his cards. I think he's going to advance the clock so it's ready to go back into night time. That's just a passive, by the way. It's not a technique or anything. He... He could reverse the value of the cards and just buy anything, but what if he went for, it's a lot, six money, or he could just spend five, he'll just spend five, and get these bouquets for a value two, maybe for his stall, so that goes into his hand as well, so he could just do it next turn, or maybe... He'll uh, use it to get some more stuff out of the uh, the market deck for free. And he's, there's another golden opportunity there to turn some cards into coins. Over to me. And so I can take things out of my... Yeah, let's do this while we care about it being day. So take up to three cards from the top of my discard pile, throw one away, and put the rest on the top of my deck in any order. So I'll put the good ice trade one on the top. That's in my discard pile now. I have an extra action. I will do Greed. So I'm in the night time now, then I'm playing Greed. Spend one to draw two cards from your deck and put them into your hand, and then discard a card from your hand. I'll discard a Junk. So I could still buy something. I'm going to use my Dramatic Romantic to put us closer to daytime. And then I'm going to use Ice Trade. Spend one to draw a card from the market deck. It's another bouquet. So that could be the first two steps right there of my market stall. That could be something for me to be thinking about now, because I do have two bouquets. And I need to shuffle my discard pile. He's not looking about, but he can get an extra action. Uh, he's going for traveling equipment, so spend one to draw two cards from your deck. So spend one, draw two cards from your deck, throw away a card from your hand, that'll be a junk, and discard another. He will discard... The Financier. This could be big plays. So that's a technique. That goes in his discard pile. He's going to... He was, he was going to do bouquets, but he's going to do ice trade into his stall. He's already at stage two in his stall, so I need to worry, I think. Because next turn, look at this. He's got three. As long as they're the same animal type, you can combine cards. And obviously, the cards only go up to five. You need to to get to eight. So, yeah, Marty's thinking maybe he'll just steam on ahead, but you don't want to go too quickly because you'll end up, you know, shrinking your deck too far and it'll get filled back up with junk and stuff and then you'll be kind of back where you started. As for me, I just have my bouquets that are... They don't give me extra actions. But it's the daytime. I'm going to use them. Draw two from the market deck. Keep one and throw the other away. I'm going to go for golden opportunity and try and rid my deck of some of this junk. And it's got an extra action on it, so I could still give up my poor uh, mongoose card. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to advance this because it's not in the. It's it's uh, my turn's done. So hopefully, uh, stop Marty being able to do anything. Now Marty is going to go for this, I think. And oh, he could he could just give up his golden opportunity. 
instead, because there's probably not much junk in here. He probably doesn't need to keep thinning it out anymore. And then he's still got these two cards. No, he's, he's going to do Golden Opportunity again. So that's another technique done. He's going to get rid of this junk. Get a coin for it. And then keeping the five in his hand, he's going to go for his stall. He's doing the three of his stall. Marty is uh, just going to try and keep stepping on the accelerator. The gas. Uh, but yeah, he's only got five cards in his deck now. So if he gets rid of any more cards... Uh, he has to, when he draws back up, you have to have five cards and you fill back up with uh, with junk. So he needs to watch out for that. <laughs> He's bought a card for ages. What are we doing? So I'm worried about where I am in this. But yeah, I want to do golden opportunity. So we advance this, get rid of a junk, get a coin. So I do have three coins waiting in the wings now. And then maybe, what if I... Okay, yeah, let's get it let's get it started. Let's start my my stall off. So I look at my, my deck, it's just full of junk still. And yeah, I probably would have preferred to get rid of the financier this card. So Marty, his entire deck is in his hand. And uh, he hasn't got a four, luckily. Oh he has. If he really wants to screw himself up, then uh, yeah, he could go for golden opportunity and avid financier to go to the four stack, but then he would yeah, that, that wouldn't be a good thing. Serenade would be a good thing to buy because it's a, if, if he wants a four, yeah, he's going to just, he's going to spend six. So a junk and the five value and he'll get uh, Serenade into his hand. So he needs to shuffle and draw back up. And so we know it's the junk in his, uh, in his deck there. Go around here. Fishing, it's the other value five card from the Penguin deck. Uh, it's an extra action. Spend one to search your discard pile for up to three cards and place them on top of your deck in any order. Over to me. I'm going to use my Avid Financier and try and get some more money. And... I do have more cards. I have another bouquet in here, don't I? I think I do. It's daytime, though. I'm really tempted to just use my bouquets. To get the choice of another card, I'm going, to, I'm going to do it. So that's another, te that's a that's technique played for the financier and then a technique for the mongooses. I think we're still in the day, so I get to draw two and keep one. So I have greed, we've seen that. Spend one to draw some cards, <laughs> flip it over in disgust while I'm trying to show the static cam. And then we have cache, cash. Uh, we guess it's cash, isn't it? Uh, spend two to search your discard pile for a card and place it into your hand. That's quite good, and it's a four value if we're thinking later on, but then I would rather get rid of greed than my uh, bouquets. But then again, greed is a two, is an extra action card. And ca oh, cash is as well. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, to... Uh, if, if, if I'm thinking of getting rid of it, yeah, I'll keep greed, because that, that'll go in my, my two stack next turn. Draw back up. Marty. He's getting rid of Serenade, I believe. Yeah, he's doing a stall action. And he is getting rid of Serenade. So he's up to four. I'm still <laughs> lagging behind here at one. And I've just got a handful of junk. Uh... If I bought a load of stuff, it would get rid of this uh, stuff better. You only get the extra action, by the way, if you use it as a technique. You don't get it for using it in the stall or something. I just want to get rid of all of these cards, but... Yeah, it's not happening right now. Okay, let's... Let's put greed in the stall, so at least I've got two in the stall. And I do get a coin off the bank there. Draw back up, I've got my resourceful ally. Marty? His, uh, his whole deck's in his hand again. I think he is going to buy. He's going to go for, it's going to cost him four. So he's going to, he's going to spend practical values here. He's going to go for the ice trade. Oh, what if he, what if he used more cards? He can. Yeah, he'll use his financier and uh, get two coins on it. 
which is a bit risky because that's now out of his uh, out of his deck for now. But then he can he's going to buy the ice trade, which is two plus two, and uh, so that goes in his hand, and he just draws the practical values back up, so that's okay. He did play a technique, so we're in night time again, and a new card comes out into the market. It's another serenade. I'm clogged up with junk. So do I want to buy the golden opportunity to start getting rid of some of this stuff? I'll use the resourceful ally. I'll actually use the resourceful ally to put the bouquets on the bottom of my deck. And then I'm going to use... One, two, three, four, five. Spend most of my coins to get this uh, golden opportunity in here and try and get rid of uh, some of this junk. Maybe maybe too late, or I could uh, use it for my stall. I could have got a cheaper card for my stall. There's another cash out there. Marty gets a coin off his financier. And he was going to use these two for a stall action, but that would mean filling his, uh, his deck back up with junk. So why doesn't he think about how is he going to get the six? This is his entire deck. So if he's using these two for the five, he's already gotten rid of his uh, blue one, so that isn't going to be the six. Maybe he just needs to be buying some cards. Bouquets are probably mostly out of here right now. But what if he, what if he buys this traveling equipment here for four? He'll use his practical values, which is five money technically. Uh, and yeah, maybe they could be the six and he can get the four some other way. He could just buy the, the cash here and get the four. Oh, he wants five, doesn't he? Not four. He could just use the practical values as the five. Now, when inheritance has come out here, that's a card we haven't seen yet because there's only there are two fives in each animal deck and they are different. We have inheritance. When filling your hand, you may draw up two, two in the day, one at night, cards from the top of your discard pile instead of your deck. So for me, I want to, I, I get this uh, coin off my financier. I'm going to use my golden opportunity to get rid of a junk and get a coin. And then we could do serenade. So draw, so wait a minute, that is one technique played, isn't it? So that would be draw a card from your deck, put it into your hand, and then put a card from your hand on top of your deck. Uh, why not? So I'll put the junk back on the top of my deck. It's an extra action card. So I will do this, spend X to draw a card from the market deck. I'm gonna spend just the one junk there. Let's draw a card from the market deck and place it into your hand. And that's, uh, that's not an extra action card, but I do, I've just gotten a five card, safe profits. Spend X, one to eight, to take X divided by two, rounded up from the bank. So that is a good way of earning some, uh, some cash and not uh, worrying as much about these cards. Draw up to five, and I've got, I've got both of the green fives. Marty. So he hasn't actually got his five to execute uh, that plan. He's going to go for it. He's going to keep going with the stacks. He's so far ahead. Although that does mean he'll... No, he gets this, so the financier goes into his discard pile. He doesn't know I've gotten both of the fives. He doesn't know what I just got, does he? So he could be banking on a five coming out for the one here to make the six. He's going to go for the next stage of the stall. So he's still got, so that's a five. He's still got five cards, so he doesn't have to draw any junk. And he's got all of this if he wants buying power. Over to me. And I think I'm going to do this, spend two, which will be the junk, to increase your hand size by two for this turn. And then I am going to put selecting contracts into my stall to just try and desperately catch up. So I draw up to seven. I need to shuffle my deck. So I drew a fair bit of junk there. Marty, he's looking for six now, isn't he? And so based on what's out, maybe he goes for a selecting contract, hoping that there's more on the way. Yeah, he's got rid of both of the other ones. So making six could be a problem. Well, if you can get a stove, the blue card, then that lets you meddle with the values a little bit. He'll buy selecting contracts. So I think he's going to use golden opportunity first. So that will put us into the day to trash a card and take a coin. And that gives him an extra action. And then he will use this three to buy this three. So he's still got five cards and he's gained himself 
an extra coin, and maybe he'll end up getting a junk back. We'll see. What comes out? It's a spinning wheel. Not good for getting Marty the six. So over to me. I need to make a four and I'm a bit stuck. So I'm going to do golden opportunity to throw away a junk and get a coin. So that's another technique played. I can do greed to spend one. I'll spend a junk to draw two cards from my hand. And then I need to discard a card from my hand. I'll discard a junk. So I now have still nothing uh, good for a four, but I've got an extra action still. I will raise my the hand size to seven again. Another technique played. And then I'll use bouquets while we're in the day. We're not in the day after this. To draw two and put one in my hand. There we go, there's a four. I'll have that cash. I've got one in there as well, haven't I? But yeah, we'll get rid of the selecting contracts as well, which Marty really wants. Can see that turn up in the discard pile, and yeah, woe is him. Okay, so it's his turn. He's looking for a six somehow, some way. And what would he like? So nothing affects the value of cards apart from that stove. There must be another stove in there somewhere. What would he like to do? He doesn't want to get rid of cards unless he's buying things. He can do his financier to try and grab some more money. And that's a technique. <laughs> Running out of space to stay in the static cam. And then, what does he want to do? Maybe there'll be another two green in here somewhere and he can... Because bouquets, I think all the bouquets are out. But what if... What if there's another two green and he buys that cash, which is six? Yeah, he'll pay six, get that cash, and then that's, that's his whole deck. And so me, I, I should have uh, seven cards, shouldn't I? So I'm looking for a four. I think I'll get rid of the serenade. I don't want the serenade as much. That's just going to be my turn, I think. Or I could do golden opportunity first. Turn that around, get rid of that junk and get a coin. And then we'll just do serenade, yeah. Or what I could do. Yeah, before we do the stall, I'll do safe profits. So spend up to eight. I'll spend eight and get that amount divided by two in coins. So I could just get a huge stockpile of coins with that card. My hand size is five, so I need to shuffle my discard pile. Oh, we need a new card, don't we? And that's going to be greed. Marty needs that, so he needs to pay six. He'll just pay these two cards by the greed so he can go to six next turn. And then shuffle up his discard pile. That one goes in there. A coin needed to come off his financier. And yet yeah, that's all he's doing. Okay, so I just want to draw one of those fives. So we could do greed, spend one. Uh, so this is a technique. We Marty's financial needs to get out of the way, doesn't he? <laughs> we need to spend one. We can draw two cards and uh, discard a card from your hand. We haven't got a five. Still, unfortunately, we would have had a five, but uh, no, unfortunately not. So we can do, let's put one of the bouquets. Oh, it's discard. Let's just discard the resourceful ally. We don't need him for now. Then the greed is an extra action card. So we could do, hmm, I'm just going to do bouquets. Or, yeah, so we just have to take what we're given. So it's a stove. I don't know why I'm so excited about that. Marty was after a stove, wasn't he? But the one in there. So we need to shuffle the market deck now and uh, shuffle the discard pile and that becomes the new market deck. And then, that was the end of my turn, wasn't it? So it's daytime now. Marty is going to go for that six. He's got six, hasn't he? Yep, yeah, that's just going to be his turn. So, oh, that goes off, and so that comes back. And so now he has to think about seven. Yeah, I don't know how he's going to do that. At the stove, maybe. Or maybe he should have bought the stove instead of doing that. Yeah, what if? That was his hand. What if he bought the stove? He just used the five. He wants to make sure that he's got that, and he's able to manipulate things. What comes out? Another selecting contracts, uh, and he doesn't need to draw a card. 
back to me. I have a five, my display of power. I'm going to give it up so that I can keep making stuff. I don't want to discard anything. Yeah, I'm just going to... I'm catching up right... Well, we've caught right up. Uh, Marty's doing his six now, though. And so he draws back up. He's got a seven. But then how's he get an eight? Yeah, maybe think about that before he does the seven. I need a six. I've got a six. Although the stove do would let me manipulate some stuff. Now I'm going to go for it. <laughs> I want to stay neck and neck. Uh, oh, I have a seven. Yeah, and I've got fives, I think, still. I think I've got another five to try and make the eight. I can't remember what colour the other five is. It's another green, isn't it? So I could do... Oh, it could be in there. I could win in a couple of turns' time. Marty uh, needs to do seven. And first up, he's going to buy a card. So he's going to spend four, five, six, seven out of his coins to buy this inheritance. In his hand right now is the seven and the eight. So it's just about, can he do it first? I think we are really neck and neck here. I'm on six. I'm just, I'm just going for that seven, not playing any actions or anything else. And hopefully my five's in here. It is. I think I'm one turn ahead of Marty. Because he is going to do his seven on his turn now. And the eight is waiting right there. But on my turn, I do the eight. <laughs> and yeah, just one turn before. Wow, that's close. <laughs> so my market stall is slightly better or slightly faster constructed than Marty's. And I win the greatest exhibition in the world in the Dale of Merchants. If you'd like to know what I think about Dale of Merchants, kind of uh, all in one. I've never done a video for Dale of Merchants before, so my first impressions of all of it, then uh, you can click the link on the screen in a second, or it's in the description right now if you don't care about any more goodbyes. If you'd like to help support the channel, it's patreon.com forward slash slickerdrips. If you already support the channel, thank you very, very much. You help keep it going. And uh, if you'd like to get involved, you get votes and stuff, and you can uh, get involved in uh, top tens and videos that get made and stuff, and have a nice old chat. Thank you for watching this, though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone. Thank you.